All right, hopefully this is working. Uh, let me know if it's working. I swear to God, I complain more about YouTube than I complain about anything having to do with skating. Uh, the um, So the, the, the dashboard says that I have an excellent connection, which I take to mean that I have a fairly strong connection. And then it won't let me start streaming. So I don't know what uh, I don't know what's going on. But if you can hear me, please let me know in the comments. Um, you can uh, tag me back to bleeding, and I will see it. Um, it looks like you can hear me. Oh, YouTube! You know it would be nice. It would be <laughs> maybe I should move to Twitch. I don't know. It would be nice if YouTube just did what it was supposed to do. You click the button. You follow the directions. I'm using the backup server now, which. You would think is only like a backup sort of thing, hence the name. Anyway, um, hey everybody, it's Wednesday. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. This is Gear Talk episode 37. Uh, Gear Talk is the show that I do every other week where I talk about the geekier side of skating. Uh, we talk about wheels and bearings and boots and liners and cuff bolts and axles and shock absorbers uh, and millimeters and things like that. Um, Thank you all for joining. Really appreciate it. It is uh, the first week of December. It's getting cold out here in North Carolina, and I'm going to start wearing my hoodies, but I'm still in t-shirt weather, so it's it's manageable. Uh, it's much better than summer. Summer is when I start sweating and I can't wear anything that isn't uh, black. Otherwise, I just become this sweaty mess at the end of the show. Um, so I'll take it. Um, anyway, um, so welcome to Gearcock. So um, I start every episode talking about my current skates. And um, this week, it's actually a really great time uh, that I can talk a little bit about some skates that have gotten a lot of interest. So typically on average, you know, I post a video. So whenever I go out skating, um, I post a video. And, uh, you know, I love to share my experiences out there skating. I know a lot of us don't get to skate every week. Um, and a lot of us are just getting back into skating and they want to see somebody who is fairly confident, but maybe not super good at skating, um, go out there and just show that it is possible for a 43 year old, uh, father of two with a full-time job to actually sneak out, uh, for an hour every weekend and get a nice session in. And it is definitely possible. So I make sure that I post a video every time I go skating so that everybody can see that yes, you can go out and skate even though you're old and it hurts more because you're old, but it's still a lot of fun. So every week I, uh, I go out and skate and sometimes almost uh, every month, every six weeks or so, I get a brand new pair of skates. And uh, you know, a lot of the time uh, those are due to my Patreon supporters. Um, I do make money off of YouTube and the ads but I also rely on my Patreon supporters uh, to give me a little bit of extra money so that I can get these skates, so that I can do the reviews, so that I can share my opinions with everybody so that you can see what every skate feels like, and then I can tell you which skates are right for you. So this week is a little different. Um, my friend Steve Johns from the True Spin podcast sent me a pair of skates to try out. I revealed them two weeks ago on Gear Talk, and I've been skating them the last couple of weeks. They are the Adapt Stealth. So these things are pretty great. Um, so I mentioned it really quickly on the video. Let me put the buckle in a little bit. So every time I do the uh, first session out there, I do what I call a first impressions video. My first impressions video is not a review. And I always try to make that really clear. The first time you skate something brand new, you're not going to know how to skate it. You're not going to skate great. You're not going to know what's right for you, what setup you are. Everybody skates a little differently. And everybody's foot is a little different. And every place that you go and skate is a little different than the other place. So I always say that they're my first impressions. They're not my review. And I usually skate the skates for about a month. And I, you know, at the end of the month, I have a pretty good idea. I've gone out four times. I've tried different setups. I've tried different locations. I know pretty well what's good about the skates and what's not so good about the skates. And then I can do my review and I can share what I've learned, what I like about them, what I don't like about them, stuff like that. So I did my first impressions on the Adapt 
Stealth. These are pretty amazing skates. They came in a couple months ago, actually. But, um, you know, Steve let me just kind of hold on to them. He has another pair. These don't fit him perfectly. So I asked, you know, hey, if, if you wanted to send them out, send them out. I'd love to skate them. And he's like, absolutely, I'll skate them. Uh, if you want them, you know, I can sell them to you. And I'm like, well, I don't know if they're good for me yet, but we'll see. I'm definitely going to buy them. Um, <laughs> these are amazing skates. So usually my first impressions videos uh, get, uh, I don't know, first weekend or so. They get around 1,000, maybe 1,500 views which is really good for me. You know, my, my videos average around a thousand views. Some of them are bigger than others. When I have, you know, brand new skates or, or big skates, they usually do better. My normal just go out and skate, you know, today I'm just gonna skate a ledge and, you know, try a new trick or something like that. That doesn't get a huge response because people, you know, they love watching me skate and everything, but it's not, there's nothing exciting about watching me skate a ledge over and over again. But it's nice and, you know, I appreciate everybody watching. And I always make the video no matter what. I don't make them for the views. I make them so that I can document how it was when I went skating. But my first impression videos usually are the bigger um, numbers. This video in the first couple of days crossed 2,000 views in like no time whatsoever. It's at almost 3,000 now, I think. And I don't think it's an amazing uh, video. You know, I was stuck indoors. It was raining all weekend. So I was at the factory skate park, which isn't the best skate park, but it's a pretty great skate park for us. But it was really just me skating a mini ramp and learning about the skates. And I think what it means is why I have so many views. I think what it means is that there's a lot of questions around this skate. These are 400 to 450 bucks boot only. And they're like 600 bucks, as you see here, this complete setup with the Symmetrics frames with, you know, wheels. These are fitty-fitty wheels, but if you got Symmetrics wheels and you got their bearings, it's around 600 bucks. And that is a ton of money to spend on a pair of skates if you don't know what you're getting. Especially with skates, you know, they're kind of designed to get beat up. You put them on your feet so they have to fit properly, and they're coming from Europe. So if you're, you know, in the Netherlands, then it's not a big deal. But a lot of us, at least me, are in the United States. These skates would probably take two weeks to get here. If they're sized wrong, what do you do? You know, you've got these amazing handmade skates that hurt your feet. And that's not okay. You know, that's a lot of money to spend on a pair of skates that don't, don't feel right. So I was very fortunate that Steve already had these skates on hand. I was very fortunate that Steve ordered the wrong size. He actually loves his adapts, but I think he got a size 10, the 43. These are the 44s. They fit me great. Um, I'm really happy skating them. I was pretty stoked to skate them this weekend. And I wanted to talk a little bit about what I've learned uh, from that session and what I'm thinking about uh, for the next session. So first of all, these are the adapts. Um, they are a custom made skate. So you can buy them all black. That's the way the uh, pro models come, I think. Uh, what's that guy's name? Oh, it's going to kill me. Oh, I forgot his name. Who is the pro for Adapt? Somebody in the comments will let me know. Um, so there is a uh, a pro model uh, for this skate. This guy is San Diego. Guys, it's the tip of my tongue. It's not Levi. It's, um, and it's not, um, oh, I can't remember his name. Anyway, there is a pro model. Um, that is the all black and it has a special logo on the back. These are custom, so you can go to adaptcustom.com, I think it's called, and make your own custom adapt skates. And those are any color that they have in stock, any of the little panels, all of these panels, you know, it stays with the same design. Russell Day, thank you, Steve. Russell Day is the guy I was trying to think about. Um, you can go to adapt custom and you can make your own skate. So you can pick the color of each of the little panels. And Steve made these look like the, the coup d'etat um, uh, USD thrones from back in the days, you know, with the gray on the bottom and the black cuff. I think it looks amazing. And um, one of the neat things is he actually got them to embroider the True Spin podcast logo on the back, which I don't mind, you know, I'm, I'm in no rush to get rid of that. I think it's great. 
it kind of you know keeps me uh, keeps me honest that uh, you know I wouldn't have had these without Steve. So yeah, they're completely custom. Um, you can follow them on the Instagram at Adapt Brand uh, at Adapt Brand, I think it is, and you'll see all of their setups. They have some crazy colors. They have some really neat, nice, clean stitching too. Like I saw one today, which was like a black with bl with white stitching. It looked really cool. Not for me, but it looked really cool. So yeah, uh, they're completely custom handmade. Um, these were a custom build. You get to pick every material. You get to pick the color of the sole plate, the color of the frame. You get to pick all of the different panels. You get to pick the stitching, the color of the little handmade mark. You get to pick the little thing in the back, the co color of the buckle protectors. You name it. And that is an amazing perk to buying a pair of skates. You know, you could not get a custom pair of skates from any other brand. I think they have USD Carbons you can do custom. Probably a similar setup, right? Where you, I don't know if it's skatebuilder.com or something like that, but you would have to build your skate and then it's a, you know, it's a carbon skate. So, um, the Adapt Stealth. So it's a very light skate. Um, it is a carbon shell. So the inside has carbon all around the toe. So it, it, it extends up maybe about, I don't know, half an inch or so. The bottom is all carbon and then it extends up to like around this area, which is the carbon. You can kind of feel around the carbon kind of goes up here and then it goes all the way up to the top of the cuff. This is all carbon in the back and then it extends around as well. So this area up here, this is just material. So this is the uh, uh, the leather material, uh, the new back, new back material, um, which is really nice. Um, it's almost like a suede sort of feeling, but it is just material and it's super squishy. One of the things that I had a problem with with the the rems was that this material up here, you know, it, they follow a very similar style. Do I have the rems here? Yeah. Oh, let me see. So these are the rims. And you can see it follows a very similar style where it's just plastic down here, plastic down here. It does have this big swoosh sort of plastic that goes around here, but for the most part, it's you know just plastic on the bottom. But where the rims goes is they have this really stiff material up here. So this leather, I don't know what it is, leather or whatever, but you can't really move it. So with the Adapt, you know, it's the same design, but this, this leather is super squishy, which means that when you tie these laces up, this wraps around the top of your foot and it fits like a shoe, like a, just a normal athletic shoe. With these, it just never felt right. You know, this, if this material were broken in, maybe it would feel better and it would tighten down and maybe it would feel like a shoe. But right now it just, it just felt like a boot you know, like a solid boot that you just slide your foot in and you kind of have laces that keep your foot in, but it, it definitely wasn't comfortable. So I much prefer this. And I was a little worried when I first started skating them that it was going to be too loose. Like it was going to feel like it was flopping around a lot. Um, I didn't have that problem. The first time, you know, I skated them, I didn't tie it up tight enough. So Guy Crawford, who is a good friend and skates adapts, told me that the way that he skates them is he tightens up this bottom lacing as much as he can. So, you know, within reason, you don't want to cut off the circulation to your feet. But tighten up this bottom section as much as you can. You want this to feel like a glove, like it's a sock around your foot. And then this section, what he said is don't tighten it too much. Right when it does, see there's this little cut right here. It's kind of like this 45 degree strap where it kind of cinches your foot in. It's really nice, really comfortable. But you want this section to be really tight. As soon as you get to here, you want it a little looser. So what he said is when you're tightening this up, instead of just you know putting your foot in and tightening it up, actually put your foot in and lean forward a little bit. So like if, 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 you're, if your leg is like this, straight, to lean forward a little bit so that you get a little bit of give on this cuff then you tighten it up really nice. And what that does is it gives you a little bit more wiggle room forward and backwards in there so that it doesn't feel like it's this boot that goes all the way up your ankle. 
This is more of a, like a shoe, like a low top shoe, but it has a high top cuff on the sides. And then same thing with the, uh, the buckle. This is a strap buckle. Just put it on. You don't need to crank it down, but put it on same, same amount uh, as you're tightening it up. Not too tight. You don't want it to be too loose, but you don't want it to be too tight. So I really like the fit. I really like the feel. Um, it's one of those skates that I haven't had in a long time, but I actually think about the feeling of it after I'm skating. You know, when you skate for a long time and you get off and take off your skates and you're like, oh, this is like, it, it feels a little weird. Like you're kind of, your feet are still kind of compressed and you know, they're maybe a little swollen because you've been skating so much, but you have this little like wobbly sort of feeling. I had that for a couple of days, but it wasn't a wobbly feeling. It was just like a nice, like a, like, like a nice hug on my foot. It really felt good. Um, it's the first pair of skates that I've looked forward to skating again because it just felt so good on my foot. And I think that's saying a lot, you know, ultimately I always push for people to get the skates that feel the best on your feet, because if they don't feel good on your feet, you're not going to want to skate them. It doesn't matter how big the sole is or, you know, if it's UFS or, you know, what the frame is like that comes on it or anything. If it doesn't feel good on your foot, it's not the right skate for you. And these feel amazing on my feet. Um, the sole plate. So this sole plate is machined. It's a single piece sole plate. This is UFS. So you can take this frame off. This frame is also machined, but this sole plate is, Uf is UFS and it's also a machined single part uh, out of UHMW or some similar plastic. Very fast. It's got these little speed dimples. So it's got even less resistance than if it were just a flat sole plate. And you can see there's a little ridge in the middle very similar to like, uh, you know, the juice system or the, the, the classic thrones where it has like a two piece grind, like the old TRS two piece system. So this area really doesn't get, you know, touched very much. It's usually this area that you're grinding on feels really amazing when you're skating though. Um, I only, again, I only skated at the indoor skate park. There are two places that I grind. One is the mini ramp, which is coping, which I had to wax a little bit, but once I did, it slid like butter, no issues. There is also this angle iron area that I did not wax, but I didn't have any issues sliding. It just locked right on, slid fine, slid like you know it was waxed. So definitely uh, recommend these sole plates. I think that they're amazing for skating soles. I'm looking forward to skating some ledges, some actual concrete ledges over the weekend. Um, I'm going to go to my Durham skate park that has like an angle iron sort of ledge. Um, and then there's some other ledges in Durham that are um, like a little curved ledge, but it's an actual ledge. It's probably going to be a really good test for these sole plates. I have a feeling they're going to slide amazing though. Um, the frame. So the frames felt great. Um, you know, nice and solid. They did feel, since I was skating flat, they felt a little more rockered than I was expecting. Um, I actually brought my rail out here. This is a fairly flat piece of PVC pipe. And you can see there is a slight rocker already. Like I'm getting this, this, this front wheel is a little bit higher than the other two, which just means that there's a slight rocker. The prop, oops, Mike. The problem with that is when you're skating, you're going to feel a little bit more squirrely when you're skating. And there's a lot of factors that could be contributing to that rocker. One is the wheels. You know, these are 60 millimeter 50-50 wheels, but are they 60.1 millimeter? Are they 59.9 millimeter? Like there's little variances with the wheels. I don't have calibers to check, but I'm sure that the wheels aren't perfectly 60 millimeters. I'm sure no wheel is perfectly 60 millimeters. Or, or some are, but you can't get a full set of wheels that are exactly the same size. You'd have to measure them all and count them up and everything. Also, the machining. I think that it's pretty accurate. I mean, these are, you know, CNC, you know, uh, machined. So it's a pretty accurate, but there might be a slight tolerance issue. The two middle wheels are definitely a little lower, though. And I'm, I'm rolling a little bit more on the little wheel, the middle wheels than the outside wheels when I'm skating. The problem with that is that it makes the effective wheelbase much shorter, which means that when you're doing airs, when you land on a gap or when you land a 180 off of a launch ramp or something like that, it's a little bit of a squirrely feeling. 
add to that when you're coming up the ramp, if you're doing a spin, I always like to throw my arms a little bit before I leave the ramp. And I wanna make sure that that feeling of kind of like if you've ever gone snowboarding where you're doing a like a 180 on a snowboard, what you wanna do is you, you, you dig into this edge and then you jump and you turn. The edge will keep you going straight. You know, if you stay flat and you start to start, start to turn, you're just gonna kind of pivot around on the ground. And that's really hard to judge. It was really hard for me to judge my spin and I didn't feel super confident. So I'm definitely going to look into skating these anti-rocker. Probably not these frames. I'm probably gonna go back to balance frames because I'm used to them. But anti-rocker is probably the way that I prefer to skate at that skate park. Not every skate park, but that skate park for sure. When these are a flat setup, I'll probably really like it. But as they are right now, there's a slight rocker and that just makes me feel a little squirrely. Uh, what else is there to say? So um, I think the biggest concern with these, um, you know, everything felt great. Soul, soul plate felt great. Um, doing normal, you know, tricks felt great. Even doing airs, even though it felt a little squirrely, it felt great. It felt like they were attached to my feet. I just had wheels on my, you know, on my shoes basically. And it was an amazing feeling. What I didn't like was the feeling of the um, Royales. And this is going to lead into another discussion a little later tonight. But the biggest problem with this is this cuff is really stiff. Um, so the carbon, I was saying that the carbon, you know, wraps all the way around the side. It also wraps all the way up. So it's a one piece of carbon that goes all the way up. So this cuff doesn't move. I mean, there's almost no movement and there's no, you can't move it forward and backwards. Left and right is impossible. So it feels like you have a splint, like you broke your ankle and you have a splint going straight up from your heel to your, like to your calf, like just on both sides. So you can't move your ankle left or right. And is that a problem? I mean, it is for me cause I'm not super bendy. Um, let me illustrate where the problem lies. So again, I brought my rail out. So when you're doing Royale, when you're doing soul tricks, it doesn't matter so much because most of your weight is like on your soul and it's got this deep V cut in the back. So you can really get down low and you can push your, your foot forward a little bit. And you do have a little bit of forward and backwards lean, which makes soul tricks much easier. And I didn't have any issues landing souls. The Royale though, the angle that I have to get with this symmetrics frame, you know, this symmetrics frame rides a flat 60 it even accommodates a flat 65 if you have 65 mil wheels. That angle that I have to get for this, it's not crazy, but it's a little steep for me. I think it's, you know, we talk a lot about the different angles of things and the, the fact that this groove is so high, sorry, so low um, to the, the frame wall means that this angle is much steeper than like an anti-rocker frame, like a dedicated anti-rocker frame. Do I have one? Oh, I have the Kaiser, these Kaiser fluids. So this is a Kaiser fluid. These are what came on my USD sevens. And you can see this is a very anti-rocker friendly frame. You can see the size of the groove and the depth of the groove, how high it goes is really, really tall. And that is amazing for doing grinds, skating anti-rocker. You know, you can see these little anti-rocker wheels, they kind of stick out where they are. And when you jump on, you know, doing Royale tricks or whatever, it is a really nice fat groove for you to do those grinds. Compare that to this, where you could see this groove is so much deeper than this groove. This, this groove goes below the axles this groove is above the axles and the axles are much closer to the ground, to the bottom here. There's a lot more room. I don't have my calipers with me, but you can, you can imagine how much, I mean, this isn't even in the, uh, isn't in the channel, but you can imagine how much taller this groove is and where that makes a difference is if you're doing Royale tricks. So if you've got a shorter frame, 
if you've got a shorter frame, you don't have to get as low in order to, like your angle doesn't have to be as steep, which means you don't have to get as low. If you have a steep angle, that means you gotta get low in order to counteract that balance. And I just can't do it. I could probably get used to it. I did land a few Royales with these uh, and I was able to get low on a couple of them, but it wasn't super enjoyable. It was, it was a lot of work trying to get down low on this Royale. So I am going to switch out uh, these frames and skate anti rocker on some balance frames. And I actually have them set up so you can see what I'm gonna be skating this weekend, assuming that it doesn't rain. Even if it rains, I'll probably go out, but this is my, my weekend setup for everybody watching. Oops, look at that cup in there. So this is what I'm gonna be skating this weekend. So this is an anti rocker setup. These are 5050 balance frames. Full disclosure, I'm the owner of 5050, um, so I got these pretty cheap. <laughs> um, this angle is going to be a little bit more forgiving for me. Not much, not much. So it's still going to be a pretty sharp angle, but it's a little bit less than the angle that I had to get with the symmetric frames. Compare that with this one. So it's not a huge difference. We're talking about maybe 10 millimeters, but you'd be surprised how much 10 millimeters makes if you're trying to balance, especially when your knees aren't super strong. So this is gonna be my setup this weekend, still with the 60 millimeter wheels. I love the 60s. I think these are an amazing wheel. Um, I don't know how many times I've skated them, but very little wear already. Uh, I'm absolutely loving them. I don't know why we waited so long to make a 6090, but they're a really great wheel. Um, anti rocker wheels and uh, yeah, so I'm going to be skating anti rocker. I think this is going to be a really good setup. I'm going to go out to the Durham skate park, um, hopefully, and uh, that's where I usually do my first impressions. And I'm going to do all of my normal first impression tricks, but I'm going to do it with this setup with the anti rocker. I think it's going to be a much improved experience. I think I'm going to like it even more. The one thing that I didn't like about these skates was that feeling of skating them, the wiggly, which I'm not gonna have, and the Royale, this cuff digging into my side, which I'm not going to have as much of a problem if I have slightly lower frames. Anyway, um, again, thank you so much, Steve, for sending these out. These were a treat. I hope everybody appreciates uh, the videos, and uh, I'm gonna continue talking about them as I learn more. I know that these are not a skate that most people will be skating in their lifetime. But if you have a friend who has a pair, if you ever have access to a pair, maybe at a skate shop that has a pair used or something like that, definitely worth trying them on and just seeing what they're like. They feel unlike any other skate on the market. And it's got me really interested to get the USD Carbon to see what that feels like. I already have the, US, the, uh, the Seba CJs. I love the Seba CJs but the stiffness of the Seba CJ might be a little prohibitive for me. I feel like this is probably just as stiff, but it's a little bit lighter and it's a little more comfortable on my feet. So those are the three carbon skates. I gotta do a carbon to carbon head to head matchup someday. Um, but for now, you know, I'm really enjoying the adapts. Um, I think these are a great skate. All right, uh, I'm gonna get a drink and see if there's any questions in the comments. If you do have a question, please make sure that you tag me in it. There's a lot of chat in the comments, which I love, but if I don't see a question, it's hard for me to answer it. If you do at back to blading anywhere in your question, it'll come up in orange for me and I'll be able to see it. So please do that um, so that I can see them. I do wanna answer your questions or if you just have a comment that you'd like to make, um, I would love to, uh, to talk with you about it. All right, let's see what we've got. 61 viewers tonight, that's great. Thank you all for tuning in. It's a Wednesday at 9 p.m. Not much else going on, I guess. Bored at home, waiting for <laughs> something to happen. The Mandalorian's not on for another couple of days, so. First question, Sam Hain. 
When will you test the Solomons? Of course, Sam is asking about the Solomons. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, where are they? Oh, I do have the Solomons. Let me show you the Solomons, just so that I could put this to rest. All right. So I have these beautiful, what are these? The Aaron Feinberg uh, Pro Model Solomons. And uh, they have king soles on them. They are my size. They are a size 44. They are beautiful. I have never skated Solomons. And um, my friend Andrew Kingery who makes these king soles. So if you are not uh, aware, um, these are some handmade sole plates that Andrew Kingery made. Uh, he makes them for a variety of skates. The Solomon is probably what started him off, but these are completely handmade. They're in, uh, uh, where the heck is he from? Nashville, I think, oh, maybe, I might be wrong. I know he's down in that area. Uh, but he sent me these skates. Uh, he's a really great friend and uh, wanted me to try them. He wants me on Team Solomon. I don't know if I am Team Solomon, but I definitely want to try them out. My problem with skating these skates is that I've got to find the right time to do it. I will definitely skate these skates. Um, I think they look amazing and I've got, I owe it to myself to try them. But um, I keep getting new skates that I want to skate. So I was going to try them and then the Razor's SL came out and I was like, well, I really want to skate the SLs. That was the, when the Navy came out and I'm like, I got to get a pair because I've never skated them before. And I know that people are more inclined to support the industry with skates that are actually available versus these that you have to go on Blade Trade or Craigslist or eBay or whatever to get. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go get the SLs, but then I'm going to skate the Solomons. And then what happened? Well, the REMS 2.5s came out. I was like, well, I've got to skate the REMS 2.5s because I've never skated REMS. I missed that last build and I got to know what REMS are like. So I bought the REMS and I did the review on the REMS. And I was like, okay, after the REMS, I'm going to do the Solomons. And then I had these adapts burning a hole in my pocket and I was like, oh, I got to skate the adapts. So after I'm done with the adapts, I promise I will skate the Solomons unless a new skate comes out. The next big skate coming out that I want to test is the 909s. Those come out in March. So I've got all the way until March to skate these. And I promise that I will skate these before I skate the 909s. <laughs> Mark my words, I will do it. Um, it, is, um, it is an amazing skate. It looks amazing. I really, really, really want to try them. Um, I want to know what all the hype is about. I know that a lot of people skate Solomon still. They're an amazing boot. Um, I got to feel what they're like, so... Definitely it's coming. I can't say that it's going to be right after the adapts. After the adapts, I usually have to reset and skate my sevens for a little bit just to know what a skate feels like. But maybe January is the time for the solo one. Start the new year with some 20 year old skates. Thank you, Sam. All right, a uh, question from Jeff Metz. Are the adapts comparable to any other skates that you have skated or are they completely different? So, I mean, it's hard to say. I gotta say they're completely different. They feel like, they feel like a shoe, like a, like a supportive, like athletic shoe. Um, it is a really weird feeling. It feels like your foot isn't really in there. Um, I never skated the Volo lights, but I have a feeling that that's kind of what the Volo lights felt like, um, where it's just this carbon that you kind of slide your foot in like a slipper, and then you, you, you crank it down and you keep your foot from sliding out of the slipper. It's a really weird feeling. The, the cuff is bizarre. Like the fact that it goes up and it's all carbon is really bizarre. That reminds me a lot of the K2 Unnaturals, unfortunately which I was not, not the a natural, the front suit, which I was not a fan of. I have them here. Yeah, these. Here we go. So these K2 Unnaturals, um, because they're super stiff, um, 
and you don't really have any any movement left or right. I actually remember that these gave me a little bit more lateral movement, but now that I'm thinking back, I, I, I might have just had rose-colored glasses. They, they really don't. I mean, it's just this big thing of material. So it, it, it again, it, it, at least there's a cuff here, but, and it's not carbon, but yeah, it's just this solid block of, you're not skating material. <laughs> that's not, that's not fun. Oops, sorry. Yeah, otherwise they're a completely different skate. I, I don't have a similarity. Um, I think it's, it's definitely something if you have anybody who has a pair of adapts in your size, definitely worth skating. Um, I don't know that they're the right skate for everyone. I don't know that they're the right skate for me. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I like a more squishy cuff, but it's going to take a little while to get used to this. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to say. It doesn't skate like my sevens though. Um, and it definitely doesn't skate like the, 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 uh, the rems, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, I don't know a little bit more time and I'll have a better, uh, better response. But for now it, it, it is different than anything else that I've ever skated. All right, going through some comments. Again, if you have a question, please tag me in it. Uh, Kelly Ryan Lake, thoughts about having no cuff and how that would affect top sides? Good question. Um, I am gonna get into the cuff, no cuff debate. Um, the question uh, about skating with no cuff, uh, I mean, I think it would help with top sides, but it would probably feel really weird skating. Like I like skating. Um, when these first came in, they didn't have the buckle around the top because Steve doesn't skate with a buckle. You know, the laces probably have enough support to be honest because they lace pretty high up and I think he skates all the way up, but they definitely feel weird without a buckle. Um, and I love having the buckle. I love having my foot in there. I love having the responsiveness when I'm skating. You know, I'm an old hockey player and I used to tie my hockey. They didn't have a buckle, but they would, I, I would tie them all the way up and I tie them super tight. And it feels like it's just an extension of my foot. And these feel like there's an extension of my foot. I feel like if I took off the cuff, I would have a lot more wiggle, but I don't think these are designed the way that a hockey skate is designed. It's not as stiff up here. These, these are definitely, because they don't really have a cuff. But if you were skating like, if you were skating uh, like the USC sevens, where are they? Oh, like heaven forbid you're skating these without a cuff. I mean, you would just be flopping around. There's nothing holding your foot in there. Just you know, lacing it up, and then and then what up here? You know, you 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 you've just got this low cut sort of thing. I think that it works for some people. For me though, I don't like setting up a pair of skates for a specific trick. I think they would be great for top sides, but they're not great for skating. And for me, I just want to skate. You know, I like skating all sorts of obstacles, all sorts of terrain. And if I can't do that, if I can't catch a little air, but then still, and I still do, you know, soul grinds and royales, I, I don't feel like I'm really able to skate. My two cents. I haven't skated no cuff though, so maybe worth doing. Drew Bennett asks, is the range of movement in the cuff similar to a one piece shadow? I would imagine so, but probably a little tougher than the one piece shadow. I think that the one piece shadow, because it's not carbon, would be a little squishier. I don't know how much squishier though. I never skated them. I did skate the two piece shadows and they felt great. Um, probably the right amount of squish. I know that I could do top sides with them. But I don't know. I would be really curious what the one piece feels like in, in relation to the adapts. I bet that it's squishier though. Oh, YouTube, what is it doing? Oh, is my mic showing? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. It was when I bumped things. I hope that didn't make it too loud. There, that might be better. Um, Barcelona Inline, do you think you'll ever review any metal frames? 
The solos are the Kaiser Element 2s. Um, yes. Um, so I've been interested in getting the solos. Um, the problem with the solos for me is that it's kind of a 60 mil frame and I don't really have a good place to test them. I feel like a, a solo frame is really good at a skate park. I could bring them to my indoor skate park. But I don't know that I'm a good enough skater to really make them shine. Same kind of goes with the Kaiser Element 2s. Um, I think that they are great at skate parks, great at skating bowls, things like that. I don't know that they're great for ledges, but and, and I'm mostly a ledge skater, you know. Um, I feel like I need to get a little better in order to skate those frames. What I am interested in is the Ground Control 72s, the new um, 72 mil frames that they're coming out with. I think that'll be a lot of fun, not for aggressive, but for urban. Um, I really love these. Oh, uh, I love these Aeon 72s. I think these are amazing skates. And I use these for my urban setup. I like to just skate around town, do a few soul grinds, um, you know, do some wall rides, ride some stairs, things like that. I would love to set 72s up on my adapts you know, and use the 72 ground control frames uh, as my frame to get this similar setup. You know, I'm not really sweating groove tricks on this. This this split is really nice, and because it doesn't have UFS, they can make this split. I don't know that I need this split. It's not like I'm trying to do Royale tricks. It isn't an aggressive frame. It, 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 I guess it's an aggressive frame. It isn't a grinder blader frame. It's a frame that is just designed for skating fast. And... I love that, and I think that metal is a really good uh, material choice for that. I think this is amazing because it's a one-piece, and it is super solid. You know, there's no UFS bolts. There's no nothing. It's a one-piece design. The responsiveness that you get on this Aeon, I think, is the same responsiveness that I'll get on the Aluminum Ground Control 72. Probably the same responsiveness that I would get on the Sola, but because it's all metal, it's really designed for grinder blading in my eyes. And I don't like that setup for grinder blading, I think. I don't think I'm good enough for that setup for grinder blading. I struggle doing flat um, uh, with uh, 50 50 frames. Um, I've skated the unnatural frames and they were okay. Um, but I, I don't know. I still feel like grinder blading, you should probably be skating anti rocker. I prefer anti rocker for that. I might want to set up those solos at my skate park. And see what I can do, but I'm not great at skate parks, so I don't know that I'm going to be able to tell the difference. So, long story short, I would love to skate them. I don't know that I'm the best person to review them because I'm not a great skater. So, for me going out there on these frames, I'm going to say that they're stiff, but I'm not going to be able to say that they're better than any other frame because I just don't skate well enough to know. Uh, the Irish Jerk asks, most comfy skate on the market for wide busted feet? Well, I can't say the busted feet part, but definitely look into the Rossi's Fifth Elements. They are mistakenly wider than they should be. Um, I didn't like them because they were so wide, but a lot of people with wide feet love them. If you don't want to get the Rossi's Fifth Elements, definitely the Razor's Genesis are the skate that most people recommend for people with wide feet. I also like the Rollerblade New Jack. I think that the New Jack is a good wide foot boot. Um, I liked them, but because I liked them means they're probably not great for really wide feet. My feet are a fairly standard width, so if they fit good in that skate and they felt fine, they're probably not good for wide foot people. I would look into the fifth element and I would look into the Racer's Genesis. Uh, Justin Kyle, what is your favorite skate, best skate in your opinion of all time? Your own personal goat, if you will. That's a really tough question. Um, I was not a great skater when I'm not a great skater now, but um, I didn't know well enough, I think, back in the days. You know, I was a frame designer, but I didn't really know how to make skates and I didn't really review products. So I didn't really know what was great about it. Um, Jeez, best skates for the times. I mean, it's, it's really hard to say. I would probably say the Solomon is the best skate of all time, simply because people still rave about it and still skate them. Um, I think that the K2 Fatty were a 
monumental skate when they hit the market. Um, and they were unlike anything else. I don't know that they were the best skates, but they were definitely one of the better skates of their time. Um, and people who skated K2 Fatties loved K2 Fatties. I think the USD Throne is right up there. Uh, I always liken the USD Throne to the Honda Civic of skates where it was the sort of skate that you could mod and make better. You know, you could get the stock system and then you could put on different frames or you could put on juice system or you could put on, you know, puffy tongues or whatever. You could really customize them. I don't think they were the best performing skates. I think that skaters back then were really good and skated really well on the USD Thrones. That's what made those skates look good. I think if we looked back and we skated the skates now, I think they're very similar to a 908, which is a fine skate. Nothing wrong with a, you know, a them 908, but I don't think the 908 is going to be one of the amazing skates that we look back on and say, oh, that was an amazing skate. I think the 909 might be. I think that new shell looks really great. I think that the work that Kyle has done with the cuff might be really great. Um, and, you know, them coming with intuition liners. That is an amazing skate. But we haven't skated them yet, so I don't know for sure. Yeah, it's a really good question. I don't know that I have a favorite skate. For me, my comfort skate is the USD7. Um, it is a no frills, great sole plate, plastic shell, fine liner, and it's UFS. That's really all that I need in a skate. It checks all of the boxes. Um, but I don't know of any other skates that are like that for me personally. I think it's a very personal opinion. Um, and of all time, I mean, I, I just, I don't know that I'm good enough to to know what it was like back in the days. I wish I wish that I skated more. I know personally back in those days, I really loved my Thrones. Um, I really loved my, uh, I had a pair of Daytonas with a Fitty Fitty Juice System on it. I love those skates. Those were a, a, a lot of fun to skate, um, but those were definitely not the best skates of all time. They might've been fond memories for me, but I wasn't very good back then. Juan Reyes the third. Solomon has no place in blading anymore. You're going to get a lot of heat for that. I don't know that it's uh, wrong, though. I think that uh, we should support people who are supporting blading. And Solomon hasn't been supporting blading for, what, 10 years? So I think that, uh, you know, you're going to skate the skates that make you skate. And if you look at shells and boots, then that's fine. A lot of people put intuition liners in their Solomons. And they ride 50-50 frames. And they buy dead wheels. And they buy... Go project bearings or whatever, they're supporting the industry, so I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, I, I get I get the vibe. I don't know that Solomon should be uh, as you know celebrated as they are, since they haven't done anything for us in a very long time. But they're great boots. It's really hard to beat. I think if you if if um, if USD made more of the USC sevens, we wouldn't need to skate the Solomon uh, the Solomon shells as much, but. We know how that is. Great, Greg Pilato, Polito, um, any chance of making a larger, longer 50-50 frame? That's an interesting question. Nobody's asked for that. Um, I don't have any plans for a longer 50-50 frame. I think that 270 is probably the longest that I need, and I am a size 10, um, 10 and a half. There are definitely people out there with larger feet than me. I think that there are a few frames out there that I would recommend. Um, the K2 Unnatural frame, the really long one, is great. I think the Wish frame, um, you know, they're coming out with the medium medium wishes. Um, I think that the original Wish frame is probably great for you. Those are probably the two that I would recommend. Um, if you feel like balance frames are too short, that is... There's not a lot of people who say that they need a longer frame. So I would go with those two. I think that you have, you know, the ability to rocker both of those with different wheels and you can get that perfect feeling for you. Um, or you could skate them flat and you could just have a nice long frame. I think that is the right solution for you. But I don't plan on bringing one out. I think it's a lot of money and I don't know how big the market is for a really, really long frame. Um, you know, ultimately I'd love to make a frame for everybody, but it costs a lot of money to make a new mold. And, uh, I don't know that I have that sort of money. <laughs> Good question though. I've never heard that. 
Justin Kyle, what is the goat skater as well? Or favorite skater of all time? I have so many favorite skaters. Um, off the top of my head, you know, um, Dominic Sagona is probably uh, my favorite skater to watch skate. I think he has an incredible style. Um, he, you know, really was the first that I know that really did sit down soyals, like really squash top side tricks. Um, I, I just, I love his spins, his just, the way that he looks at skating, I think he's amazing. Dustin, you know, always one of my favorites. Um, you know, back in the Brain Fear Gone days, just, uh, you know, amazing, amazing uh, vision of where skating should be. I think that was always great. Um, Shima, you know, always skated like it was a video game, uh, which was awesome to watch. Um, you know, just switch ups on rails that most people couldn't do. Uh, jumping from rail to rail. I always loved watching that. Um, Arlo, I mean, is always going to be the, 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 the best of the best for me. He was the, the best when I started skating and he's who we looked up to when we were, uh, we were little grommets. So, um, yeah, those are probably my top five, I guess, of all time, uh, top four. I don't know how many I said contemporary. Um, I'm a huge Eugen Enden fan. I think he, you know, just like Shima thinks of things as a video game and just kind of does whatever he wants. Um, love Montre. I think his uh, positivity is amazing uh, for the sport. I think it brings people in. Uh, the fact that he can just kill any obstacle uh, and make it look effortless is incredible. Um, <sighs> that's really it contemporary. I mean, I, I, I love watching, you know, John from, you know, kill all of the rails with the switch ups that I can never do pivot grinds and such. Um, I think, uh, you know, Stefan, you know, has a great way of looking at skating, jumping off of things and has his own style with toe pick slides and stuff like that. I, I, I it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, I think there's a lot of amazing skaters right now. Uh, I, I, I don't miss the hammer days. I think, you know, Carlos Pianowski and such, those guys um, were incredible for their time. I'm glad that they're not doing that now because I don't want to see those people get hurt. Um, back in those days, they had insurance. They had a lot of money coming in from blading and they could afford to get hurt. Nowadays, I don't know that they can. So anyway, um, that's a great question. I don't really do top 10 lists, so that was interesting. Um, I'd like to give it a little bit more thought and really think about it, but I usually do an end of year, my favorite skaters of the year, uh, video and I do favorite products and I do like favorite sessions and sections and videos and stuff like that. I will do that again this year. Um, I usually do that during winter break. So stay tuned for that. Um, it'll be on the channel, uh, probably last week of December or so first week of January. Uh, Mr. Self Destroy, what U.S. Skate states would you visit on a hoax tour today? Me personally, um, so definitely would have to feature some North Carolina. Love my North Carolina skating. Uh, I think it's an amazing place out here. Great parks, great ses great street sessions, um, great skaters. The guys down in Florida, I need to get down there and visit. They have some amazing parks. They also have some amazing street and again, some amazing skaters. Um, I'd love to go out to Texas. Um, I've made it out to Denver. Uh, and I'd love to go out again. Uh, Chicago and Detroit would definitely be on my list. Um, Southern California and Northern California would probably round it out. Uh, I would spend a lot of time down in San Diego and then I'd come up to like Huntington Beach area and visit the old spots and see if I could find something to get in trouble with. Uh, and then up to Northern California, I'd go back to my hometown of Alameda, um, skate around Oakland, and then, uh, yeah, just explore. I mean, San Jose, there's so many old spots that we used to skate up in Northern California, probably not there anymore, uh, but it would be great to see them again. And I'm sure that we could find something to skate. I think that would be an amazing tour. Um, I can kind of see it in a map in my head right now. Um, I don't know that I can get two months off of work to make it happen, um, but I would love to get people. If anybody's interested, uh, let us know and we'll try to sponsor. I don't know how much we could throw into it, but would love to do another hoax tour. I think that would be a, a really fun thing to watch. Uh, lots of great questions tonight. 
Uh, Celso Texiera, are your feet wide or narrow? I have pretty wide feet and the REMS 2 5 seeing things like they don't have that side to side movement that you mentioned. Maybe they're designed for wider feet. You might be right. Um, I have um, standard feet, so it's between a C and a D width. Um, I measured it after getting the REMS to make sure that I wasn't crazy. I think the problem is that the different feet in, are wider in different areas. I had a weird like side to side feeling in the back, but I also had that sixth toe feeling. So I think because my feet might not be super wide, but maybe my toes are like not skinny, that the toes were bunching up and hitting that toe section and really causing the, you know, the aggressive like inflammation <laughs> after every session. They're just really difficult skates. I think the problem is there's no give inside. You know, they, where are they? Oh, uh, where'd they go? Did I throw them away already? Here they are. Ugh. They're just solid skates, you know, because this is all plastic and it's thick plastic, there is no wiggle room. And your foot just kind of sits in there. And if it doesn't fit perfectly, it's not gonna feel good. I do agree that if I had a slightly wider foot, especially in the back back here, it wouldn't wiggle around as much. But it was really the worst of both worlds where it was wiggling around, but it was too tight. And that just, it, it, it felt horrible. So. I'm glad that they work for you. I'm sure that there's a lot of people out there that love them. Again, I review skates for most people. I think that most people should avoid this skate. I think that it's not gonna feel good on your foot, but prove me wrong. You know, if you love these skates, get them. Like support the company. Like Kato is doing good work. It's just not the right skate for me. Um, it might be the right skate for you. Uh, Kelly Ryan Lake, I highly recommend the Rossi's Fifth Element liners in the Solomons. Interesting. I find the stock liners to be a little stiff with the forward flex due to the hard tongue. That is good feedback. Um, I don't know what liners I'm going to put in here. I have, I don't have my Fifth Elements. I think I let Steve borrow them. I think that's where they are. Um, I will try these stock liners, but I will also try, I have the Rain V3s. I've got some Fat Boys. I've got some skinny boys. I've got a lot of different liners to put in here. I'll see which liners feel best for me. Um, most important, I just want to test out this shell. I think the shell is what's important. This liner is probably, you know, it's it's an old liner. Um, it feels pretty thin, um, maybe a little stiff, especially in the tongue area, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm really excited to try these out. I keep lusting after them when I see them in the garage, but I need to uh, I need to get through the skates that I have. Then I can skate these, and I'll report back on the liner. Uh, Tam Neugen, uh, I think that I pronounced that right. I don't know. Um, Good day from Australia. I've recently gotten back to blading at 41. Currently skating Aeon 60s. Would the adapts be a good progression from these? That is a great question. Um, adapts from the Aeon. So maybe. Um, so these are the 72s. I do have the 60s down there, uh, but I don't have them set up. The Aeon 60s are an amazing skate. And I think the reason why is because they're a little squishy. This cuff is definitely more squishy. I'm not going to get to the cuff discussion tonight. I thought I would, but there's so many great questions. I don't want to derail this. I'd rather ask answer some questions. So... Uh, I will do the cuff thing in two weeks. I promise you. I promise, promise, promise. Um, but this cuff for me was fairly stiff. And I know that I could do topside tricks on these, but it wasn't super easy to do topside tricks on these. So in that respect, it's probably going to be a good translation for you from this to adapt. What I love about these skates is that they are super responsive. This frame being part of this shell makes everything feel like this solid block, like you're just skating around and you don't care what's happening. It's just boom, boom, boom. And it feels amazing when you're skating them. Like there's no wiggle, there's no like loss of power. Whatever you put into these wheels is coming straight from your foot. And I love this feeling. The Adapt definitely has that feeling. Because the bottom is carbon, when you bolt on your skate, your, your frame, 
you get that really solid power transfer. It's much more than like a shift where it would have like a, a level of abstraction from the shell and the, 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 the bolt is going into this piece of plastic that's bolted to the shell. It's just, there's a lot going on there. You don't want that. You want it going directly into the boot. Carbon, if you can, that's why a lot of the wizard skaters skate with the, um, with the Seba CJs because they have the carbon shell. They can bolt the wizard frame directly onto the carbon. It feels amazing. I think it would be a pretty good switch. You're going to get a different feeling altogether. I think that this, that we're one of the things where the Aeon does fall apart for me is this open area. You can't really get it super tight. It has a really nice open lacing area, but I feel like I still got a little bit of like heel lift inside, like my foot moving around a little bit more than, uh, than I'd like. The 45 degree strap does help remedy that, but the 45 degree strap comes apart a lot because it's this Velcro design, which I wish they would switch. Um, if your uh, Aeon 60s are bolted in right, and if they have a good strap, and maybe if they have a buckle instead of this this Velcro, I think that they would be a really good competitor to the, uh, the Adapts, but you're not gonna beat the Adapts with comfort. Um, and you're not gonna beat the Adapts with uh, the sole plate. Um, this sole plate is never gonna be as good as the Adapt unless you bolt something onto it because this sole plate is your boot. It can't be the super slidey material because the super slidey material probably wouldn't be good for support. The super slidey material on the Adapts is just a slidey. That's all that it does. It doesn't have to worry about being the frame as well as the boot. That is one of the flaws with the, with the Aeon. It does have a slower sole than normal. There are compromises but it is an amazing skate to skate. So I think it's definitely worth it. If you have the means, you can't go wrong with getting adapts. Just make sure that you size it properly. Uh, it's a very expensive skate to get wrong. So make sure that you measure your foot, send Peter and Olga your foot measurement and make sure that they send you the right, the right skate. Uh, to my MCF1, uh, make some best car steel grind plates. I've spoken. All right, <laughs> more Mandalorian. Um, I am not going to be making steel grind plates. Do I have any aluminum grind plates? We do have some aluminum grind plates. Um, it's really just for fun. I don't know that uh, Everybody needs grind plates. I think they are a lot of fun to skate. We're gonna come out with some different colors so that you can accessorize your skates. Uh, right now we have silver, we have black. I don't know that steel, I can't anodize steel. I'd have to powder coat it. Powder coating doesn't last super well. We do have some old powder coated. That was the first uh, grind plates were steel and we would powder coat them. But the powder coating you know, chips off after you skate it for too long. With the anodizing, you can do uh, different colors and they last longer. It's a really good feeling. And I love just, I love the look of the grind plate. I don't know, maybe I'm just a sucker for the nostalgia, but I think that is cool. I think the black ones look amazing on white frames. So we will look into doing this. We'll probably do some more colors come spring. Um, I don't know that steel is gonna happen though. I don't know that there is an advantage to steel over aluminum. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, Justin Kyle, are the REMs the most disappointing skate you've tried? If so, what was it that disappointed the most and didn't live up to their hype? Um, yes, the REMs were the most disappointing skates that I've tried. Um, what I didn't like about them, they're really heavy. They're the heaviest skates that I have. And after skating them, I felt like my legs were still weak. Uh, and this was like a day or two afterwards. I, I hate that feeling. Um, I want skates that feel like an extension of my foot. Um, so I just put my shoe on and I've got wheels. This definitely felt like I was putting my foot in a boot and it was a heavy boot. And it was just, it wasn't right for me. The sizing was wrong for me. You know, I was getting really bad toe pain. Um, I would skate for maybe 30 minutes and I'd start getting this really severe pain in my right foot. That wasn't good. And I tried different liners. I tried different insoles. I tried different heel shocks. Couldn't find a solution that worked for me. 
after three sessions and I gave up. Um, I liked the grinds. I think that the uh, the Royale angle was really good. Um, I did you know some really great back farves for me. Um, I did some really solid Royale tricks, really solid souls. I think for grinder blading, they're a pretty good skate. But it was not the right skate for me. Um, I think the sizing needs to be a little bit more tweakable. And for me, you know, it was the wrong size. Um, very similar to the Rossi's Fifth Elements where there's just a lot of movement around there. And it just felt sloppy when I was skating them. Like my feet were kind of bowing out a little bit. It wasn't a good feeling. And I like skates that feel responsive. Uh, so yeah, they were definitely the uh, skates that I was the most disappointed in, especially at the price. I felt like they should be more comfortable, more like the Carbons, more like the, you know, the Saba CJs. Like they should feel padded. They should feel like, you know, feel good <laughs> on my foot. And these just hurt. Um, and, and I can always say that, oh, it's my foot. A lot of people... Um, after I posted those videos said, yeah, my foot hurts too. I can't skate them because my feet hurt. That's just un unnecessary. You know, if, if a lot of people are getting hurt from the skates, you should probably fix the skates. Uh, D man D can I have your TRS please? Nope. Nope. Sorry. Um, geez, YouTube is slacking. Oh, my, sorry, my YouTube comments are, as soon as I scroll down, it just jumped and I lost where I was. There I am. Um, does the rocker you described persist when you change the positions of the wheels you have? Is the Symmetrics frame really rockered? Um, no, the, the Astronomy Beck. No, the Symmetrics frame is not rockered. It should be flat. I did not change the positions of the wheels around. I could measure them and see, um, but I haven't. That is definitely the first thing that I would do to troubleshoot. Skating outside for a little bit, I will get a better wear. I'll get it a little bit more flat. But I, I just, it wasn't a great first experience for me, unfortunately. And uh, I feel like that skate park, I really need to skate more in a rocker. Another drink, sorry. A lot of good questions tonight. I wasn't ready for this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm backlogged. Kelly Ryan Lake says, please don't skate another skate without a cuff. I'm worried about your ankles. Um, they meant the stiffness of the cuff of the adapts. Okay. Understood. Um, I won't skate another skate without a cuff. Though somebody was telling me to skate the rims without a cuff. And I, I mean, they're already loose and wobbly enough. I don't know that I need any more wobbly. All right. Loading, loading, loading. Uh, let's see what else I can find. Good, good, good. Uh, the Irish Jerk, what is the origin of the 5050 brand name? It was, um, the half metal, half plastic. So we used to make, uh, grind plates. Um, we would make a grind plate that was metal on the inside, plastic on the outside, bolted to a metal or to a plastic frame. And it was 5050, half metal, half plastic. We don't make those anymore. We haven't made those in 30 years, but that's where it came from. Um, it is not a skateboarding trick. Um, it is a skateboarding trick, but that's not where the name came from. Uh, Eli Wolf, why don't they make aluminum sole plates? Probably the same reason why the uh, Sola frames don't slide super great on, uh, on coping for topside tricks. Um, not just the Sola frames. Don't want to just say those aluminum frames, the Element 2s as well. You don't want that much metal against coping or against, um, you know, a metal uh, uh, angle iron or something like that. Um, plastic slides really good. Uh, little bits of metal works pretty well. Like if you had a couple raised axles, I think the wish frame 
came with the little washers so you could get your axles to extend a little bit past the frame which gave you a little bit of that metal on the on the coping that is really cool that's a cool sound just like skating with grind plates it's just a really cool sound that you get not a huge performance change but it just feels fun if it was all metal You've got a lot of metal, like a brick, going against another brick, and that doesn't slide super well. Um, plastic slides much better, in my experience, than metal on metal, and that's why you don't do aluminum sole plates. You could probably design an aluminum sole plate that would be a little bit less resistance, but again, what for? You know, you want that sound, sure, but you don't. You're not going to beat sliding with like a UHMW or something like that. That's always going to be, in my opinion, it's always going to be one of the fastest materials for, for sole plates. Uh, Justin Kyle, have you ever sustained any serious injuries from skating? And if so, was it uh, hard to get back to it? Um, yes, uh, nothing too bad, knock on wood. Um, I always skate with my helmet. I have never had a head injury, um, but I do skate with my helmet, so I make sure that if I were to fall down, I would be barely protected. Again, not, nothing's going to protect. I'm not skating in a bubble wrap, right? Um, it's not going to keep me from getting injured, uh, but I will probably get less injured with the pads that I wear. When I started out, um, I would just skate with my helmet, and then I think I got uh, knee pads first. Um, I think I was skating, uh, I don't know where I was skating, but you know, I just fell down and I hit my knee, and it freaking hurt. And it was all, you know, bleeding, and I was like, well, that sucks. You know, I was wearing jeans, but you know, I fell down and I hurt my knee, and I was like, all right, well, I gotta get some knee pads. I usually get pads after I hurt the part of my body that I need the pad for. Um, so I got the knee pads, and that's the G-Form knee shins. They feel great. I love skating with those. They're not perfect for shin guards. I do wear a shin guard now because I had that shin injury a couple weeks ago, and that uh, really hurt, and it went through my G-Form. So now I have a shin guard as well. Um, so I'm very protected on my legs. I don't feel like I'm going to have any issues with any knee or shin injuries. I did mess up my wrist, so I was doing some... Um, big wheel skating in uh, Chapel Hill and I was jumping on this little incline and I was trying to do a wall ride and I came off wrong and I braced myself and I think it was this wrist I braced myself and almost broke my wrist there was um, a huge swelling just massive bruising this was like two years ago I think I was not wearing a wrist guard I went in and got x-rays to check just to make sure that I didn't break that little whatever that weird bone is that they say that you could break really easily. Thankfully, I never broke it, but my wrist was pretty jacked. And I think I took two weeks off of skating after that. I definitely got a wrist guard. Um, and you know what? I think I did trail skating for a while after that. Skated with my wrist guard. I didn't do any aggressive for like a month just because I was worried. You know, if I fall down and brace myself, it's going to hurt again. And ultimately, I work at a computer for a living. And if I can't use my mouse, it's really bad for my <laughs> livelihood. Um, so I always wear my pads. I don't care what people think about it. Um, I have to wake up in the morning and take care of my kids and my dogs. And I've got to get to work. And if I can't do that because of an injury, it's a problem. Um, I have found, you know, for preventative, um, I do a lot of stretching. I do like five minutes of stretching every morning mostly in my back and my neck. Those are the areas that I injure the most. Lower back, mid back, um, and then my neck. I tend to uh, you know, have shoulder issues because of falling and bracing myself. Um, and I always make sure that my neck is loose because you know, if you fall down, you're gonna jostle your neck, jostle your head around a little bit. You wanna make sure that it's nice and loose. My back is also really bad. Um, just from years of playing ice hockey. So I always stretch out my back. I spend a lot of time stretching out my back. I would highly recommend you do that. Definitely wear your pads. Um, but thankfully, you know, knock on wood, I haven't had any huge injuries. Um, I don't skate too hard, to be honest. You know, I don't do rails very often. Very rarely will I do a rail. Um, 
I don't do gaps. I do mostly ledges. I do mostly skate park. Just things that I know that I can do. And if I bail, definitely I could get hurt. But I have enough pads on to keep me from getting severely hurt on the things that I skate. And I'm not skating drop rails or, you know, big gaps or anything like that where even if I was wearing pads, I would still get damaged. Um, I just, you know, that doesn't interest me anymore. Um, I like doing little gaps off of things like 10 stairs or something like that. That was it's fun to skate, you know, and do a gap on that. Um, I like skating the little rails that I have at my skate park. But really, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the level that I'm at. Um, I would much rather be healthy and, uh, you know, put videos out and, you know, share them with you all um, than, uh, than try to, you know, push myself and, uh, and potentially get hurt. All right, uh, I think I am good. Uh, Eli Wolf, do liners work the same way as skates shoes in sizing? Yes, uh, definitely get the same size as you do with shoe. The catch is that most liners, most liners nowadays, they come with three sizes, maybe even four. Um, this one comes with uh, four sizes. This is a, uh, a, a, a USD Skinny Boy um, that came in the, uh, the Aeon 72s. Um, these are my fits. Skinny Boy by my foot with a little USD logo in there. It's kind of weird. Um, but it says that um, it's an EU 4344 US 910 UK 89 CM 28. 27, 8, and 28, 5. The CM is what you're looking for. So typically, I'm a 28, 5, and 44. If you measure your feet in centimeters, you're going to get the most accurate reading because centimeters is what everybody kind of goes off of. It's the universal measurement. If you went off of your shoe size and you said, oh, I'm a size 11, you're a size 11 in what? You know, Nike's size different than Reebok's size different than adidas size different than in you know dress shoes instead go after centimeters and say okay my foot is 28.5 centimeters i'm going to get the skate that fits 28.5 centimeters and in this case it's the size 44 usually is the size 44 but you got to make sure that the liners add up the right way but for the most part liners are just like shoes um you can swap out your liners you can find different liners that fit in different shells um, most important thing that I always recommend is find the skate that feels best on your feet. Don't worry about the performance stuff. Don't worry about the frames. Don't worry about the sole plates or anything like that. Worry about the fit. If you can find a pair of skates that feels good, you're going to have a lot more fun skating. You might not be able to do all the tricks as fast as you could with some different sole plate or a different Royale groove or something like that. But if you don't like skating them, it's not worth it. Like get the skates that feel best and then you're gonna enjoy skating more. All right, I think I went long tonight. Thank you all so much for joining me. Oh, uh, last thing. So um, I have a lot of frames. Um, <laughs> so I do a lot of testing on frames and uh, bringing out new wheels and stuff like that. I like to skate them and I like to swap them out a lot because I do, um, you know, I do my photos and I try to promote for marketing and stuff like that. I don't want to sit on these frames. So um, if you go to balancedisc.com uh, and go to the Fitty Fitty site, we have a used frames section now. Um, so I'm slowly but surely going through all of my old inventory. And if I have used frames, I'm going to put them up there. Um, they come with wheels. So uh, the Fitty Fitty wheels, uh, this is a flat setup that's up there. Um, they'll come with wheels and bearings. If you have always wanted to skate 50 50 frames, but it's been a little expensive or whatever, um, that's a good way to get in. Um, I know that there's not a lot of 50 50 frames on Blade Trade, um, and when they are, they kind of go pretty quickly. I'll be putting up some used frames. Any used frames that I have here that I'm not currently skating and that I don't need, I'm going to put up there. So, um, good way to save a little bit of money. Uh, they're in great condition. You know what I skate. These are my skate frames. So, I mean, these. 
have a little bit of wax wear, but you could clean this up really quickly if you wanted to make them look almost new. Um, and I'll get you good deals on them because they're used. Uh, they're still in great condition though. So uh, anyway, um, if you're interested, balancedist.com. You can go to 5050frames.com and click on shop and you can find it as well. Uh, and there's a used section. I'm going to post it on the Instagram tomorrow, but I wanted to let you guys know uh, ahead of time because you uh, are watching the gear talk and you're probably interested in the gear. Um, there's a few different frames up there now. I'm going to post a few more tomorrow and uh, bookmark it if uh, you want to check back in. Uh, there's a used section. So uh, anything that I find, wheels, stuff like that, that I need to get rid of, that's where I'm going to post it. Anyway, uh, thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, let's see, today's the fourth, so we will be doing another gear talk in two weeks. Uh, it will be the 18th, uh, another Wednesday, and then we'll probably take the Christmas holiday off uh, because it's Christmas and it's probably going to start getting cold out here, so I'm going to be on hoodie duty, but uh, oh, looking forward to uh, the holidays. Looking forward to some time off. It's been a crazy week at work, so doing this is a nice way to decompress at the end of the day, talk with my friends about skating stuff, geek out a little bit about the gear, and uh, thank you for joining me for, uh, for my time, and uh, I'll see you guys again in two weeks.